The second part of chapter four is related to solving quadratics by a variety of methods. We're still going to work with standard form, vertex form, and intercept form. Lessons 4.3 and 4.4 are about solving quadratic functions by factoring. Factors consist of two numbers or variables that multiply to get a given number. The unique thing about factoring is that those values can be positive or negative. Now we have something that's going to be called a common factor. And a common factor is literally just kind of what it sounds like, something that all terms have in common. Let's take a look at common factors over on the right. Find the common factor. In our first example, we have 4x plus 12. Taking a look at this expression, we have the first term and the second term. Those are the two terms that we would be looking for something that they might have in common. Well, I noticed that 4 would go into 12, so the common factor would be 4. That's something that both terms have in common. When you find the common factor, you can put it to the outside of a product. And again, it's a lot like distributive property, but in reverse. So if 4x plus 12 has a common factor of 4, and we put that out in front, then for that first term, all that would be left is x. And then we have a plus in between. And if we factor that 4 out of the 12, that would be like dividing it. And 4 goes into 12 three times, therefore we would have 4 times x plus 3. That's finding the common factor and taking it out of each term in that expression. Over in the middle, x squared plus 6x. Again, we just have two terms this time. We have an x squared term and an x term. What do both terms have in common? That would just be the variable x. If we take that out of each term and put it in front of the product, we would take x out of x squared, and that would give us an x left over. And then we have plus in between again. If we take x out of 6x, all we would have left is 6. So the common factor is x, and if we separate that by using that common factor, we would get x times x plus 6. In our last example, we have three terms this time. 6x squared plus 12x plus 4. This would be a quadratic expression in standard form, like we talked about in the first part of chapter 4. This time we have three terms to look at. 6x squared, 12x, and 4. Now there's not a lot that all three terms have in common, but if you recognize that they're all even, we could definitely show that a common factor would be 2. So if I take 2 out of all of those terms and put it out in front, 2 into 6x squared, well 2 goes into 6 three times, and we'd have to include that x squared on the inside because all three terms don't have an x as part of that common factor. And then it's plus again. 2 goes into 12x, well 2 goes into 12 six times, including that x, and then plus again, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So our common factor was 2, and that could separate this into a product of 2 times 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. Looking more specifically at quadratic functions, if we want to factor, our goal is to convert from standard form to intercept form, like we talked about in the first part of chapter 4. We were able to go from intercept to standard form then by foiling or multiplying all of our parts together. Factoring will help us go in the other direction, convert from standard form to intercept form. To factor, we're going to have a couple of scenarios here. We'll start off our factoring rules when that a value out in front is 1. Take a look at these three steps. The first thing that we want to do is find all of the possible factors for the constant in that quadratic function that's in standard form. Factors are all the numbers that would go into that value. And then determine the pair of numbers that add to get b in the middle. I know, this is quite the process, everybody. 
So you'll commonly hear me say split the C to get the B. So split the value for or the number for C into two numbers that would add to get B. Once you know the numbers that do that, the x squared term will always separate into x times x for us. And then our two factors will be the minus p and the minus q. It seems like a lot right now, but let's try some examples and hopefully it will make a connection for you. Factor each expression if possible. Our first expression is x squared plus 7x plus 12. We know that we're going to use our factor rules on the left because technically the number in front of x squared isn't written, which means it defaults to a 1. The first thing we want to do is find factors of c. c is positive 12. So I want to know all the pairs that would multiply to get 12. I'm just going to start with the very beginning. 1 times 12 would equal 12. 2 would go into 12 6 times. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 5 doesn't go into 12, but then 6 would go into 12 twice, and we already have that pair. These are our three choices. Now, out of these three pairs, our goal is to find two of those numbers, or a pair, that equal the B value. 1 plus 12 wouldn't work, 2 plus 6 wouldn't work, and 3 plus 4 actually would work. 3 plus 4 equals 7. So notice we split the constant C into two numbers that add to get B. So that's split the C to get the B. Split the constant to get the values of B in the middle. Now that we know that, we can take our x squared and split it into our two parentheses. This is how easy it is to convert it to intercept form. The x squared will always start each parenthesis off with an x, and since 3 and 4 are both positive, we're literally just going to write plus 3 and plus 4. So notice we went from standard form to intercept form. If you were to foil those two together and combine like terms, it would go right back to that standard form. Now in the example on the right, it looks really close to the same thing, but watch the key difference. Instead of positive 7 for b, now we have negative 7. Let's see how splitting our constant is going to affect that. Still we want positive 12, and I know we can use 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Now we need to figure out how we can combine them in some way to get negative 7. Well, 1 and 12 and 2 and 6 are completely out for us, but I think we can work with that 3 and the 4. If we make them both negative and add them together, we would in fact get that negative 7. That would be our B value. We're going to keep the pair that we had before, but we're just going to make both of them negative out in front. The x squared will just split down into x times x, the beginning of each parenthesis, and because the 3 and the 4 are negative, it will just look like minus 3 and minus 4. And that would be the factored form for x squared minus 7x plus 12. Now, truth be told, you could also reverse the order of the parentheses. You could do x minus 4 times x minus 3, and that one works as well. Now, example C throws a little bit of a zinger in here at us. We've got 2x squared minus 10x minus 72. The trouble with this one is that our a value isn't 1, it's 2. But if I look at each term, notice something unique about a, b, and c, the constant. We have a common factor here. And anytime you have a common factor, we have to deal with that first. So put that in all caps. If each term has a 2 in common, and we put that on the outside, then we have just x squared left over on the inside. And if we take diesel, that was my cat, sorry. <laughs> Stop looking out the window, silly boy. If we take 2 into 10x, we would have 5x left over, and then another minus. And then last but not least, our constant is going to change from 72, thankfully, all the way down to 36. 
So now our C value is negative 36 and our new B is negative 5. We're just going to leave that 2 on the outside and we'll put that in our final answer. All right, so let's go back to our factor rules. Take our new constant of negative 36. Factors of 36, there are several of them. We could do 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 goes into 36 12 times, and 4 goes into 36 9 times. 5 wouldn't go into 36 evenly, but 6 does exactly 6 times. We have 5 pairs to work with. Our goal is to find a pair that we can multiply to equal negative 36 and add to get negative 5. This means one of our numbers has to be negative and the other one has to be positive. Can you see which pair would do both of those things for us? If we multiplied them, we'd get negative 36, and if we add, we'd get negative 5. I think if we take positive 4 plus negative 9, that would give us negative 5, which is our B value when we add, and if I multiply them, that would give us negative 36. So once you find your pair, you're ready to convert to intercept form. Again, take that x squared, we'll split this up into our two parentheses for intercept form. x squared will start off each parenthesis with an x. The 4 is positive, so no matter what parenthesis you put it in, make sure it stays positive. And that 9 is negative. Now, last but not least, don't forget that 2 out in front. That is a crucial part for the shape of that quadratic function. Let's try this second row. Example D, p squared plus 2p plus 4. Taking a look at each term, notice our a value is 1, so we're good to go there. And we have 2 times p and then plus 4. Our constant is positive 4. Now, the nice thing about this one, we don't have a lot of choices. We could do 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. Hmm, this is an interesting. We have to have them add to get positive 2 and then multiply to get 4. 1 and 4, nothing's going to happen with that. Nothing's going to happen with 2 and 2 either. We can't add them because then we'd get 4. So this means we can't find a number that, or two numbers that multiply to get 4 and add to get 2 at the same time. So this one doesn't work. And ultimately that means it's not factorable. Have no fret, everybody. We will have other ways to work with this type of function. But in this case, we can't convert it to intercept form. And I think this is a good stopping point, everybody. Feel free to try examples E and F if you'd like for fun, just to see if you can navigate through them. Whoa, that got a little spinny. There we go. Otherwise, we'll finish the rest of these in class.